always starts the same. The vision that haunts my restless nights. This game is pretty interesting, except they definitely needed to hire me to do the audio mixing. Let's mix it up a bit for the review here while we all take a look at Kate West, The Vanishing Files. I've never heard of Ms. Kate West before, but perhaps she's the Nancy Drew of video games. Wholesome crime fighting and detective work that's not too creepy, so it gets an E rating 10 plus. This review is aimed at those classic game room viewers who like picture puzzle games, or who have kids who enjoy mystery games and puzzle games. While this game has a rating appropriate for kids, it's not a childish game. It's one that can be enjoyed by kids and adults alike, and it also has a nifty two-player mode. It's not very action-packed. Most of the game involves investigating pictures, finding objects, or spotting the differences between pictures. When I fight crime, I'm like the kid from Iron Eagle. I can't do my best unless I have some rocking tunes. There's 15 chapters in Kate West, The Vanishing Files, and each chapter, depending on your skill and also the size and clarity of your television, will take you a large amount of time to complete. And each chapter progresses in a typical pattern with slightly increasing difficulty each chapter. To start off, you visit a number of locations and have to find clues in a picture. You don't actually find the differences between two pictures for this section. What you're, what you're doing is you're looking for objects in a picture, which I thought was pretty fun. I actually kind of like this stuff. Because I'm the Hardy Boys of video game reviews, nah, I'd rather be the Blade Runner of video game reviews. Come to think of it, you know, Deckard actually had to look at photographs in extreme detail to find those snake scales. Leave it to me to find Blade Runner references in this game. The complexity of some of these puzzles and some of this artwork is quite impressive. It makes me feel like somebody spent a uh, couple years of their life playing with Photoshop. And each time I played, I would find about 75% of the objects right away. But it's always those last couple that, that just take forever. Frequently because it'll describe something like totem pole or walking stick and you're really not entirely sure what that would look like in this jumbled mess of an unsanitary environment. Which uh, apparently these people have fish and geckos laying all over the place. They love fish and geckos and dominoes and butterflies, lots of butterflies. Found everything. After you've investigated locations, you then have to go to another set of puzzles where you find parts of pictures within other pictures. And these I found very easy and just cleared them right out and moved on to the next one. If at any point you ever get stuck in this game, you can get a hint and it deducts some points away from you and uh, makes you feel like less of a detective. The stories are told through these cutscenes, which have a Scooby-Doo feel to them. Come to think of it, she does kind of look like Daphne. The next step of your investigation then goes into spotting the differences between pictures, which can frequently be more challenging than, uh, than it might initially appear. And although the puzzles in each chapter of the game get more difficult, you also become more familiar with what the designers are doing, how they think. This would be a fun game that you could play with your kids because all you do is point the Wii remote at the television, you can activate the magnifying glass, and there's, there's nothing else to it. It's, 
very intuitive to pick this game up and play it. After that, you then convict a criminal using some deductive reasoning from these clues that you found. And you go through one more final phase where you have to put items back into the photographs to make two of them match. Gotcha. And move on to the next chapter. I found the writing in the game to be surprisingly good. It's not just some two-dimensional storyline written for two-year-olds. There's actually some thought put into this game. Let's see what Kate West can do. Can she solve it? Because she has, like, pseudo-telepathic powers, I think. I don't, hopefully she can freeze people and smash them with a hammer. Now that's a different game. Sorry, they don't have that in here. Um, it's clearly not a game for everybody, but this is a glorified puzzle game with a storyline. Which is in itself not a bad thing. Kids who like to read mystery novels would really get into this game. I think. Read the back of the packaging. Read the rating. You decide. Kate West, The Vanishing Files. Maybe they'll make a sequel, which is more of a first-person shooter. Kate West, this time I'm bringing a flamethrower. <laughs> <laughs>